So now let's take a look at the uh, output side of the decoy. This is the side that's actually going to drive the MOSFET. Uh, there's the uh, gate connected there and source connected there. Um, now the reason for using these two transistors, and you can see that um, when they were flashing alternately, this is the complementary bit, only one is on at any one time, um, is so that we can pull the gate of the MOSFET rapidly through this uh, very low what would you call it, resistance impedance, it's not resistive, but um, this high current path from 9 volts into the gate of the MOSFET, we can pull the gate of the MOSFET quickly up to 9 volts, then when we switch the other transistor on, we can very rapidly pull the gate of the MOSFET down to its own source, thus shorting gate and source together. And the reason we want to pull it with these um, sort of high current drivers is because the gate of a MOSFET is relative to the source. It's very capacitive. There's a lot of um, capacitance between gate and source on a MOSFET. Let's actually take a look at that. Right, now I'm going to use the uh, IRF Z44N. So let's get um, a couple of those out. The reason I'm going to use the IRF Z44N is because I've got lots of them. And uh, if I put one of these in the component tester and test it, Let's see what it says. Right, it says it's uh, an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Pins 1, 2, and 3 are gate, drain, and source. Uh, the threshold voltage is 3.6 volts. That's the voltage at which the um, current starts to flow between drain and source. Now, you need to take that uh, probably on this MOSFET a fair bit higher to get a very low on resistance between drain and source. But look at this. We've got um, C, capacitance, is... It was four point something. Let's do it again. Uh, four point eight five nanofarads. Um, okay, I'll tell you what. Let's take that out and let's actually bend that middle pin, which is drain. Let's bend it so much that it actually snaps off. Okay, that's the pin completely removed. Um, now that's drain. Drain is also tab, so I haven't completely uh, destroyed this MOSFET. I can still connect to drain on the tab. Uh, that's gate. This is source. So let's put it in the tester now and see what the tester makes of that. And now it thinks that it's just a capacitor of about uh, 4 nanofarads, 4,000 picofarads. So we've got 4 nanofarads of capacitance between gate and source. Now there's also a capacitance, let's put a proper MOSFET back in there. There's also capacitance between um, gate and drain. There's also capacitance between drain and source. Uh, so those capacitance, capacitances add to the capacitance between gate and source and you just have a total capacitance as indicated uh, by this tester. Let's quickly do that again. Let's see what this one is. So this one's a bit lower. This one is 3.37 nanofarads uh, between gate and source. So putting a voltage across gate and source is actually quite difficult. It takes time because this is a capacitor effectively between gate and source. And so it takes time to charge that capacitor up, which is why we need uh, a high current path from 9 volts of the battery into the gate. So that when we turn this uh, opto transistor on, the gate is pulled as quickly as possible up to the voltage we want, well 9 volts it will be, and then we, when we switch that transistor off and we switch this transistor on, we discharge uh, the charge that's sitting across the gate and source capacitance, we discharge it down through this uh, transistor because we want to get the gate voltage down as quickly as possible, which is why we've got this high current path, so high current path to pull the gate up to 9 volts, another high current path to pull the gate down to zero volts. So on my little uh, decoy board, I want to put some uh, connections. I'm going to put another uh, DuPont thing on this side because I'm going to use DuPont wires uh, to connect the decoy actually onto the MOSFET. I'll probably solder um, a straight header onto the uh, pins of the MOSFET so that I can link it with DuPonts to the output of here. But I also wanted to put this in because I've been having some thoughts about how to uh, make an improvement to this uh, decoy driver um, because I seem to remember seeing a rather asymmetric and rather slow rise time 
when charging this gate up, trying to get the gate up to nine volts, and a more quick uh, fall time when pulling the gate voltage down to source or naught volts when effectively discharging this gate source capacitor. So I'm just going to put this header in because I think I want to add an additional component, more of that later. Right, so let's solder uh, these headers in. This is the turned pin header and this is the angled uh, DuPont style header. Let's go to the top now so I don't create bridges and I think I'll do these at a slight angle doesn't matter if I bridge between these middle two because they're already bridged there in fact let's bridge them all up let's fill that with solder and bridge that all up okay that looks good now someone a while back was saying that um, when you use blue tack and it gets hot it goes all very sticky and coats everything in sticky gunky blue tack well it does but of course as soon as it cools down it restores its sort of um more i don't know solid so you can just sort of dab it on there and pull all that sticky blue tack off relatively easily and it cleans up quite nicely Right, there it is. Um, now I've left a little gap there because I want to get wires in um, for a 9 volt battery clip, one of these, so that I can connect the 9 volt battery to the output side of this. That's uh, here, 9 volts, 0 volts. So I'll put the wires in there and then I'll probably blue tack the um, decoy down onto the 9 volt battery so I can keep those leads pretty short uh, when I'm actually using it. Uh, microcontroller on the LED side and MOSFET on this output side. Uh, found my glasses. <laughs> I couldn't find them for weeks and I've just discovered them. Uh, right, I've got a nine volt uh, battery clip here so I'm just going to strip the wires on there. Perhaps it's that one. Yep. Um, and connect that into the output side um, of my little decoy board. I'll solder the wires straight into the Vero board there. Uh, so that's actually a couple of um, benefits of this decoy MOSFET driver. One is you've got complete galvanic isolation between the microcontroller side and the MOSFET side. You do need this uh, 9 volt battery, unfortunately, which is a little bit impractical. But I do th think I've got a solution to that, actually. Uh, that probably come in another video. Um, you've also got this uh, sort of low, uh, this high current pull up, high current pull down. So we drive the gate of the MOSFET um, either way with significant current so we can do it quickly. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this behaves at 31 kilohertz or whatever it is I set the uh, PWM on the Arduino to. Um, now there's another reason. Uh, oh yes, that's it. It's um, the microcontroller is running on 5 volts here, but 5 volts isn't necessarily enough to turn uh, these older style MOSFETs really on hard to get a very low uh, on resistance between drain and source. Uh, so here, of course, you can use um, a separate voltage, a, a higher voltage, so that we can take the gate up to a nice high 9 volts. We could even go higher than that. I think the gate uh, can go up to about 20 volts. You can even take the gate negative to minus 20 volts. It won't do any harm. It won't turn the transistor on, of course. Um, but because the gate is completely insulated using that uh, very thin, um, I think it's polysilicon insulating layer, you can actually drive it um, up to about 20 volts before it starts punching holes through the insulation layer or uh, down to minus 20 volts. Uh, right, let's solder this uh, cable on. Right, so now I've gone and got um, a straight header and I'm going to break off a little uh, three pin section there and I'm actually going to pull uh, the middle pin out. Right, now I've got uh, a two pin header with a gap in between and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solder this header uh, down onto gate and source on this MOSFET so that I can attach uh, DuPont leads and put them into the output um, part of this decoy driver. So I'm going to solder that on there now. Uh, right, bit of blue tack to uh, hold the header sort of sitting on top of those two pins while I solder it. Uh, probably have to bring the camera out to solder that. Okay, let's get that soldered. I can see what I'm doing. It's all a bit dark. That's looks all right. Okay, let's solder uh, gate. 
nice amount of solder so that, that header is nice and firmly attached. Let's solder source. That looks okay. Let's have a closer look. Uh, right, yeah, so that's my two pin header um, soldered across the gate and source pins of this MOSFET. So now I can uh, hook up the output side of the decoy and see what sort of um, waveforms we get on the scope. Right, I've attached the decoy to uh, the top of this battery. Now, as far as I remember, there's very little leakage down through these two transistors when they're off, so I can leave this battery pretty much connected uh, permanently. So what I want to do is hook the input side of this up to the Arduino, get it back into PWM mode with the potentiometers to vary uh, the mark space ratio, and then attach the MOSFET to the output of this and uh, just see what we get. Right, well this looks uh, pretty promising. Um, if I turn the pot down to minimum 0% PWM, so the output is effectively low, we can see that the top pair of LEDs comes on. If I turn that up the other way, so that's now 100% PWM, the output is just permanently high. We can see that the bottom uh, LEDs are on, and as I vary it in between, you can see that I've got effectively brightness control between uh, the top LED and the bottom LED. So we should be getting um, at 31 kilohertz, uh, that pulse, that varying pulse width transferred through to the output side on these opto transistors and uh, control of the MOSFET. Now the question is, I've never run this at 31 kilohertz before. So it'd be very interesting to look at the waveforms uh, once I connect up the MOSFET to see whether uh, we're actually getting that pulse transferring through these opto isolators.